But first off, we're off to Red Hill and an update on the much-loved cafe at Red Hill, which is being forced to close. A few weeks ago, we talked about the Pilots Hub, which is at Red Hill Aerodrome, who told us their lease on the cafe and Hangar 9 won't be renewed. Well, since then, had a petition to save the cafe from closure. Let's take you to there. Adrian Harms. Funny how he always ends up where places uh, they seem to make a coffee. I'm just saying that, but there we go. Harmsy, good morning to you. Yeah, morning to you, James. And you're quite right. I got a lovely cup of black coffee the minute I arrived here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're in Red Hill, on Red Hill at Airdrome. It is the most glorious morning here. The sun is just coming up. I can see light aircraft on the field in front of me. A bit of mist as well. Uh, rising above. We're actually inside uh, the pilot's hub. Just to describe it here, James, there's a, there's a counter with a lovely coffee machine behind it, some nice croissant and other bits of cakes in front of us as well. Lots of photographs, as you can imagine, of all sorts of aircraft all around the walls here. And literally, if I were to go through a door, um, I can see, oh, I don't know, let's have a look through the window here. Oh, uh, in, into the hangar itself probably half a dozen aircraft here as well. So we are right in the heart of the airfield here and right in the heart of what goes on. Now, you mentioned the Pilot's Hub, um, which is going to close. Let's find a little bit about the, the, the Pilot's Hub and what it is, why it's here, and what it means to the people here who are at the, uh, at the airfield. Let's talk to Richard Blaine. Good morning to you, Richard. Good morning. First of all, thank you for the coffee. That's my pleasure. Now, now just tell us a little bit about, uh, about the Pilot's Hub and why it's so important. So the Pilot's Hub, we opened the Pilot's Hub here in Hangar 9 back in 2014 and the aim really was to bring the aviation and our passion in a aviation and make that accessible to everybody in the local community, young and old. So we opened our doors, welcomed the public in, we have around 160 seats here, half of them inside, half of them outside, and people get right into the heart of the aviation action, just as you've described, looking out of the window here or sitting on the decking, you're virtually right on the taxiway, or to go to the loo you have to walk through the hangar past sort of a, um, a bunch of vintage uh, aircraft and you're mixing it with the pilots, you know never know who you're going to bump into here. You're probably standing in a, uh, uh, waiting for your sandwich next to one of the air ambulance paramedics or one of the police helicopter pilots or something. It's fantastic. Um, now, the hub, as you say, was, as you say, 2014. So before this, this, this was sort of a derelict part of the airfield, was it? Yes, it was. The building was pretty derelict when we, when we took it on. Um, and so we put in a huge amount of infrastructure here in order to make something that, that, uh, that works and is welcoming and warm and, and, and friendly. And I think friendly is what we've really aimed for here. We've wanted to build um, a place that is, very, is, is extremely well, welcoming to all people. Um, and we love to see the inspiration that we create uh, with young and old. And there were many, many stories, lots of connections that are made here. Many people who have learned to fly and had fabulous experiences as a result of their introduction to aviation through the Pilots Hub. So people are now probably banging the radio saying, so why on earth is it closing? Yes, it's a great shame, and um, uh, I have to confess I don't fully understand the reasons for the Aerodrome's decision to close this down. Um, I, I think reading the statement that they issued on the 7th of October, they've made it fairly clear that they don't really want the public on the airfield, which I think is a great shame um, and a great missed opportunity to continue to build the very good community relations that we've strived to build over the last uh, eight or nine years or so. So, a petition has been launched. Let's find out a little bit about this petition from Clive Pierce. Uh, good morning to you, Clive. Good morning. Um, tell us a bit about this petition. First of all, how many signatures have you got on this petition? And presumably it's a petition to stop this place closing. Well, it is, yeah. We've, um, so far, we've had 6,500 signatures, and a lot of those people have left really heartwarming comments, uh, which are indicative of how much this place actually means to the local community and wider. Six and a half thousand signatures is, is, is a lot of people. Are these mostly people who live in Red Hill or these people who use the airfield? They, they are, yeah. I've kept the promotion of the petition just to keep it local, to keep it pure, to really be indicative of how much this does mean to us all. And, and there's a personal story behind this as well. I think your son learned to fly here? Uh, yes, because well, um, as a parent who has witnessed his own child benefit from, from our visits here, um, I was just devastated to hear the news. It was closing its doors for good. And he was one of the little three-year-olds who used to stand at the fence there, watch the planes, and while we would sit in comfort here, drinking coffees, we'd virtually have to drag him away. How disappointed are you that this is going to shut? Oh, I'm, I'm devastated. That's why I started the position. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just 
I feel like crying. Wow. It means that, that much. It, it does. It means that much because he's had his time. He was taken under the wing kindly by Richard here. He took on the role as hangar rat, which basically means sweeping around planes, helping them to move them out of the hangar safely, under my supervision, of course, because he was only 13. But when he was 15, just out of the blue, they came up to him and Richard said, uh, make sure you've got time to do some flying when you come back from holiday. And uh, we said, well, yeah, he, he's, he'd saved a little bit of pocket money. Yeah. He said, we don't mean that. It's the pilots, to show their appreciation, have put some money together for you to have pilot lessons and my jaw hit the ground. Well, it's a great story. Uh, let's come back across to uh, Richard. Now, we have got a statement in from the Airdrome, Richard, and there are bits and pieces in here that are, are, I'll read out to you. So, the currently song Hangar 9, which includes the Pilots Hub, will not be renewed when it reaches its termination date on the 31st of March. Um, Red Hill Airdrome will take back Hangar 9 and operate that space itself. What, what, what's your reaction to that? So the lease actually runs for considerably longer and, and quite a long way beyond uh, 31st of March 2023. So it's a slight misstatement to say that the lease ends at that date. What they've actually done is exercised their earliest possible break clause. I think later on in the statement it says that they will, uh, and this was news to us on the 7th of October when they released that statement, uh, but they say that they will open this place but only as an inward looking place so only to serve the people who directly use the airfield um, and not the general public yeah and they go on to say the airdrome intends to open a new food and drink facility later next year that will provide better and more appropriate services to the growing number of tenants their guests and pilots hence it's being refocused to be inward facing to serve the commercial users of the airdrome red hill airdrome is privately owned although it is primarily an airfield it's also a business park occupied by many commercial tenants who are entitled to a safe and protected environment with reasonable security measures to place to restrict and monitor access by visitors is that, is that a concern i mean is, is that security concerns would you agree with what the airfield is saying there uh, no i i would not and uh, you know i've, I've taken consent of, of the tenants here, the tenants, um, every, every tenant that I've spoken to warmly welcomes what we do here, warmly supports it, sees the importance of engagement with the community and sees the importance of, of encouraging young people into the aviation and aerospace industry. So I strongly disagree with that element of their statement. Uh, where does this campaign go from here? We've got, uh, we've got Clive's petition, but where does that go from here? Well, that's an interesting point, and I will hopefully have an opportunity to engage further with the airfield, with the wider board, and, and, and perhaps with the shareholders of the airfield as well, who possibly will take a different view to the one that has been taken at a more local level. Richard, Clive, thanks so much for joining us this morning. As I say, uh, James, it is the most glorious morning here at uh, Red Hill uh, Airdrome. However, a sad story here that the hub here, as uh, Richard and Clive were explaining, is due to close. Mm.